Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanj and today we're going to look at that question around is investing in the share market too good to be true? And this whole idea around ETFs, you know, you buy them, they go up in value, you get these distributions, it all just sounds a bit too good to be true. So in this video, I'm going to try and answer three elements of those questions. The first is around, is it really passive? Second is, is it actually that good, the returns you get from ETFs? And third is, are there any risks? Because there are a couple of risks involved with investing. So the first question is, you know, around the passive investment side of it. Do I really just have to buy it and not do anything after that? Surely I have to get involved, tweak a few things here and there. Well, to answer that, I would first say, how involved are you with your superannuation? Because your superannuation is investing in the share market. Like 10% of your salary gets taken out every month or every fortnight and sent towards your superannuation account who takes your super and they invest it in things like shares and bonds and maybe some property and real estate. They do all that on your behalf. So when it comes to ETFs, you can definitely run a very casual operation, very low investment passive kind of strategy where you just invest your money into the one ETF, like a Vanguard ETF or a BetaShares ETF, and you leave it there. You don't have to tweak it further. People will tend to try and tweak it a bit more here and there if they feel like there's opportunity and getting an extra 1% here or there. But broadly speaking, you can just buy an ETF and leave it and then just keep buying the same ETF over time. And I've done videos around potential ETFs to start with and I've done videos around how frequently and how much should you be investing as well. But yeah, it's a very passive thing. It is truly passive. It's not like YouTube, let's say. YouTube is not passive income because you have to turn up, you have to do the video, you have to get it edited or you have to edit it yourself, you have to then write all the description. There's nothing passive about YouTube. But investing in the share market, it is a passive thing. Once you've done your research to decide which ETF to buy, then you just keep buying it and that's it. Now the next question is, are the returns that good? Like, is it too good to be true, these returns you're seeing on the share market? Sometimes you see like 10%, 20%, that's insane. Like, is it really that good? And is it too good to be true? Is there something else going on? Well, to answer that question, we have to sort of take a couple of steps back and look at the world of finance. So in the world of finance, Good is generally defined by how you perform against a benchmark. So there's a benchmark and the idea is, are you doing better than the benchmark or are you doing worse than the benchmark? You don't want to be doing worse than the benchmark. And the benchmark is often, in Australia, an example is the ASX S&P 200, which is effectively where a company called the S&P, Standard & Poor's, they've looked at the top 200 companies in Australia by market cap They've taken the average performance of these companies over well, whatever time period you want, let's say a year, and then they've also adjusted that average based on market cap. So they've said the larger companies will account for more of the average than the smaller companies. So remember, there's like, I think there's over 2,000 companies on the Australian share market. So the top 200 don't account for everything, but they certainly account for a large portion of the market cap sizing. And what they've said is, the average of these companies will be now the benchmark for Australia. If you're investing, the mindset that everyone has is you want to outperform the market. That's how you know you're good. You're a tier one operator if you can outperform the market. Now, it's fine if you can outperform the market one or two years in a row. It's a whole other story around outperforming the market over 30 years, which if you're getting started in the world of investing, that's probably what your time frame is going to be, or maybe even like 20 years. You know, show me a, a retail investor who has outperformed the Australian share market for the last 10, 15, 20 years. And I'll show you someone who should be working for Bridgewater or someone like that. You know, you, to have operated that well, you have to have both understood what's going on in Australia and the impact of macroeconomic factors and also the impact of interest rates. And my goodness, this, this person is very good. And this is the thing, it's quite hard to consistently outperform against the market. So when it comes to ETFs, what ETFs do is they help you achieve average. And average is good. I like average because the average returns of the Australian share market 
I'll throw it up is is around 7%, could be more. I haven't actually checked it recently, but over a long, long time period, the share market has actually done quite well, even if you just achieved average. And this is the thing, when it comes to personal finance and investing, it's all relative, which I know sounds soft and weak, but it is all relative because it's, you know, what's the most basic thing you can do with your money is earn it and just keep it in your house as cash, as literal cash. Then the next best thing is maybe you could buy bonds, government bonds, corporate bonds. Government bonds, maybe not so much, but corporate bonds could potentially get you slightly higher returns and a little bit more risk, but you know, slightly higher returns. I've done videos on bonds a while ago. You can check them out. Then the next level is when you generally get into equities. So shares, and you can buy shares and you know, the lowest risk is buying ETS or you can buy individual shares. And then even higher than that is when you start to look at things like cryptocurrency assets. Now, that's quite, it's, it's quite risky both in terms of volatility and risk of it going to zero. Whereas you can say shares are not as risky in terms of going to zero. It's just that they kind of fluctuate a lot. The volatility element is there, but the actual risk of complete and total loss is not as high as say something like cryptocurrencies. I have nothing against crypto, but that's, that's generally the narrative in terms of risk. And that's it. So when it comes to your personal finance and investing journey, average is fine. The average of the share market is perfectly fine because it's probably doing better than what you and I would actually achieve if we tried to play the share market ourselves and we tried to invest individually by ourselves. And in fact, I actually did a video where I looked at comparing being a shareholder, having shares in Commonwealth Bank versus having held money in a Commonwealth Bank high interest savings account. That's a nice little differential. But I did that and I'd forgotten what I said, but I think it would have said it was better to be a shareholder. So there are some risks when it comes to ETF investing. I'll say the first one is your ETF that you've invested in could shut down. Now, that doesn't mean your money goes to zero. It just means that whatever value the ETF was at when they decide to shut it down, you get that paid out to you and that can trigger a bit of a cash, that can trigger a bit of a tax event that you need to manage. Speak to your account on that. The second type of risk when it comes to ETFs is generally around, it's more a risk in general when it comes to investing, which is at the time that you need your money, it might not be worth more than what you put into it. Meaning, and this is the risk of you know having too short a time frame at any given time, your shares might not be worth or your ETF might not be worth more than what you put in, which is a bit of an issue because <laughs> then you've made a loss. But over 30 years, you'll be hard pressed to find an ETF that has underperformed over 30 years. Actually, that being said, they probably shut down all the ETFs that have underperformed over 30 years anyway. So you have a bit of a survivorship bias, but anyway. Generally speaking, when it comes to ETFs over a long period of time, you'll find that they will be worth more than what you put in. And that's what you want in investing. You want something to be worth more than what you put in at the start. It's sort of like buying a house. So it's like you buy a house and you know at some period in your ownership of the house, it could be worth less than what you bought, what you bought it for. But it's not the end of the world because you know over the 30 years or the 20 years that you're aiming to own that house, it will generally be worth more over time. So I'm not as familiar with real estate, but I know that's sort of the narrative is, yes, you can have fluctuations in your house price, but as long as you can still maintain paying off your mortgage and you have that long-term mindset around what you want to achieve in 20, 30 years, it's not the end of the world when it goes up and down. It's kind of similar to shares where, it, yes, it will go up and down over time, but generally speaking, when you buy something like an ETF, it should be higher up broadly over time, broadly, broadly. Could be risks, there are risks. Speak to your financial advisor to determine the risks. And that's it. Check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one, bye for now.